I've said it before and I will say it again, Butterick is my favorite of all the big four pattern companies. So I am so thrilled that their fall collection just went live today on their website. So I am going to review it per usual with my first impression review. I have not seen any of these patterns before. So you guys are just getting my honest initial reaction to each of the designs. All right, first up we have this women's dress. It is described as women's fitted faux wrap dress with v-neck and sleeve variations. Not much of a v-neck, I'll say, but um, this little, I don't even know how that's drafted. There's clearly a fisheye dart happening here, and then some maybe kind of overlay situation happening. Maybe that gets sewn into the neckline, and you get a little buckle here, and then um, it gathers into the other side seam, I think. Um, you've also got a little bit of... Um, a little bit of like ruching in the sleeve, which is quite nice. They obviously made this out of a, some kind of stretchy sequin sparkle fabric for the holidays. I was just gonna say, I'm assuming we're gonna get some versions that are a little bit more everyday. This is certainly appropriate for church or the office. Um, even kind of one of those casual quarantine weddings would be really nice. Um, this is a little bit concerning to me, but that could have just been the fabric. Um, not all fabrics are super easy to work with. I do think that these, both of these are knit fabrics. I do think they're both stretch. Um, they've got a really beautiful hem band going here, um, which makes the, the hems really beautiful. And then the neckline is a little bit more pronounced on this as well. Beautiful little sleeve, although it is a little bit wide at the wrist. But that's just personal preference, something easy to take in. Yeah, look how pretty that ruching is on this. Also, take a look at the fit here in the back. It's really pretty. No fisheye darts in the back. So all the shaping is happening in this one waist seam, which I do feel like is a little bit long for her. Um, maybe she's technically short-waisted. I'm not sure how much um, like fitting they were able to do on the models given everything that New York City went through with the quarantine. Um, so that might have been something that they would have fixed before but which weren't able to this time. I don't know. But something to check on your own patterns for sure. So yeah, it does look like this piece here is just an overlay that's attached to this so this base is on this dress as well but um, this is attached also as well as whatever this little piece over here is quite cute I don't love 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 these little pencil skirts especially in knit um, but that's just a personal preference for me all right where did we get any line drawings I guess they're down here yeah Oh yeah, we just looked at those. Huh. Okay, um, so yardage. Moderate stretch knits with 35% stretch. That is a lot of stretch for a close fitting dress, I think. Um, jersey, interlock, cotton knits, rayon knits. It's going to be pretty clingy. So some things to consider would be sizing up and making it out of a more stable knit. Um, even like a sweater knit or something like that or finding a like double knit that's just super stretchy, something a little bit thick thicker that might um, kind of flare away from the body a little bit. But you will just need an invisible zipper and some buckles. And this is a women's dress. So 18 to 24 and then 26 to, 30 to 32 is the sizing on it. And then yardage wise, you really just over a couple yards of fabric up to maybe two and a half but no finished um, width measurements other than the hem, which is not really that helpful. So I usually will skip that. But you will have those measurements printed on the pattern pieces. It's just nice to have them on the website when you're shopping. It might make it a little bit easier for you to decide which size. But Okay, now we've got a dress, jumpsuit, and sash. 
Sassy Mix Sass. Button front v-neck bodice view a dress with asymmetric hem and flounce, which I love. So cute. And then view B is a jumpsuit. Very good. So we've got this uh, like button down and bust dart happening here. Some kind of sleeve with an elastic um, hem band and then elastic waist with a tie and then that skirt with the flounce. Really cute. Here's the jumpsuit version. You also get this sleeve that has a flounce on the bottom. Adorable. The jumpsuit looks very uh, roomy. Lots of ease. Great little casual fall dress. I love how it just kind of goes up ever so slightly on the knee. Just a little hint and a nod at maybe some sexiness. Super cute. Nice, blousey, really lovely. Here's the back of the jumpsuit. Yeah, this is incredibly forgiving to fit because you have that elastic waist. Um, so you really can make it look um, really good on you, uh, even if you accidentally cut a size that's too big or, I don't know, it ends up being a little bit frumpy looking. You can hide a myriad of sins with an elastic waist. Okay, um, here are our line drawings. Yep, pretty much covered it all. I don't know that I'm like terribly blown over by this design. I mean, maybe the combination of the skirt and the blouse, it could be argued that that's unique and different. Like you don't see little itty bitty buttons on a button down dress with this kind of skirt. But again, I, I mean, maybe I'm not blown away with just the idea of the button front. I mean, it's cute, you know, but it's not like, you know, revolutionary <laughs> or anything like that. Um, okay, crepe, chalet, rayon, crepe back, satin, silk. Yeah, anything lightweight, drapey. Drapey is key, key, key to this. It has so much ease and volume that if it's not drapey, it is just going to look like a sack, a potato sack on you. Okay, so half inch buttons and elastic and then a little bit more elastic for um, view A which was the sleeves. Okay dress and sash A about three yards of fabric jumpsuit is just a little bit more fabric that flounce really does the skirt flounce really does take up a lot of fabric so you could essentially make a jumpsuit for the same amount of fabric as a dress. Um, but two different looks. Sizing here is 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. Cute. All right, next up we have what I think is another women's pattern. Yeah, women's dress in two cup sizes, C, D, and then double D. And this is a really cute dress that kind of looks a little bit like what we're doing in our sew along, but with a raised neckline. Um, it's got that high empire waist, V neckline, you know, little sleeve with that's long enough to give you a little bit of coverage, but not too long. And it looks like it's hitting right above the knee. But we've also got this version that is uh, floor length maxi with a slit here. And then you can do kind of like an overlay with a like strapless, like this navy part is strapless underneath. Two really cute, very different options. Love the pop of color in the shoe. Not that that really matters for what we're discussing today, but... Um, yeah, super cute, super flattering. I love these Empire waistlines so, so, so much. For me being a pair, I think that they are incredibly flattering. I think even if you are a, what would that be? What is it whenever you're like an inverted triangle? Is that apple? No, apple's big in the middle. It's like upside down pair where you're bigger on top and then you have smaller legs. I don't know what fruit that is. Um, 
also super flattering on on you guys as well. So and and even for apples, it would definitely give you that waist definition that you're always trying to trying to find or create um, for your body shape. So super cute. I do wish there were like maybe um, why won't it let me? Oh, there we go. Maybe another sleeve option. Oh, look at this. I didn't notice that before. That's quite interesting. Just something to give you a little bit of ruching and volume here. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, and this one even has a little kick pleat. That's a nice little couture detail. Beautiful fisheye darts in the back. Yeah, this dress is drafted quite nicely. Let's look at the line drawings. Yeah, that the short one had that um, ruching thing too. Interesting. Let's go back to her again. Gosh, yeah, you can barely see it. Now, I wonder if she weren't like popping a hip, how this lays. You know what I mean? Does it just look... There, she's popping the hip again and again. Yeah, it's hard to tell if this is going to look like sloppy. I don't, I don't know the word. Or if it looks really cool and chic. It's really tough to tell from the way that she's standing in those, in the two front on pictures. But if you wanted to make this version, or at least with the contrast overlay, but you didn't want to make it so super fancy, you could you know, totally think about doing things that are sheer, but not lace, like eyelet. Um, if you did like a seersucker with an eyelet, or if you did just like a sheer, you know, mesh, um, tone on tone, that would be really cool too. There's definitely ways to, to make this version, but not make it so dressy. Yeah, I'm just not 100% sure about this. I would need to see that on a couple different bodies before I could determine if it... Because you can even see here how it's creating the the um, folds in the fabric. Like, does that end up looking intentional or like a mistake? Easy enough maybe to take those out, I guess. Just cut this on the fold instead of, you know, whatever they have you cut it out as. I bet this takes a lot of fabric now that I think about it. Yardage, crepe, chalet, satin, silk, rayon. Contrast, lace, contrast for the upper part of B is shears, lace, embroidered shears. I mean, all of these, crepe, chalet, satin, rayon, all that for view A, for this view? I don't know about that. I think you could go a little bit more heavyweight into the midweight wovens. I honestly thought this was Ponty or some kind of stable knit or like a cotton sateen, maybe. Okay, 18 to 24 and then 26 to 32. It actually does not take that much fabric at all. The shorter dress is just under two and a half yards. And then dress B takes three yards plus, um, you know, whatever your contrast is. It's an interesting little design for sure. It looks super flattering on her. She looks like a million bucks, but she always looks so pretty. Um, okay. Okay. Now we have this little dress. Okay, so we've got a few different style lines in here, and they've obviously cut some on the straight green, some on the bias. Um, maybe there's a couple within here as well, but it's also got this really interesting little collar. This isn't really screaming fall to me. I mean, maybe that one a little bit more. But that's just kind of hard to see the style lines. The stripe really does call out the style lines a lot. I don't know about this. Is it bubble shaped? 
you know, where it's like curved. It like tapers in into hem. The collar is really kind of cool. You can see it really well here. How it kind of crosses over. Hmm. Catherine Tilton. Okay, so I bet it is tapered. We'll see the line drawings here. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. You can see how it widens at the hips and either comes straight down or kind of very slightly tapers. But Catherine Tilton is really known for very artistic designs. So that's, you know, you're always going to get like funky seam lines with her. So very on brand. Linen, broadcloth, cotton blends, and stable knits. And then there's alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium, and then large to extra large. And yardage wise, yeah, up to three yards of fabric. A little bit more than three for the one with sleeves. Round neck dress has small band collar and multiple asymmetrical seams. Can be short sleeved with cuffs or sleeves. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Again, I really do feel like this stripe was the way to go to highlight all of this. I'm just not sure about the lower half volume. Obviously, you could, you know, slim it down a little bit if you wanted or make it more A-line if you wanted. But it is kind of cool how it's all pieced together, right? Imagine, too, if you put stuff like flat piping or, I don't know, fun stuff in all these seams, too. That would be really cool. All right. What do we have next? Into tops. Small little collection here. This is a tops have gathers, slit at front neckline, and collar and sleeve variations. I mean, I feel like I've seen this a thousand times for years and years where you have the little V neckline and then the little bias binding kind of holding it all together. This is going to be me, by the way. Gray hair, but long. I wish it were this thick. Maybe when I get her age, it will thicken back up again. But anyways, oh, you have a set in sleeve. This one comes down to a little bit of elastic and then like a little drapey cuff. Uh, seven eighths inch length. You have a curved hem. I can't tell if there's anything happening in the bodice. No, it looks pretty straight down. So here's another collar option where you can tie it off. And then this one has the um, elastic at the sleeve hem, I think. I mean, this is this is nothing new, right? We've all seen this a hundred times. Why in heaven's name you need an invisible zipper that goes all the way down that far for a blouse that has literally no waist seam and a deep V in the front? I have no idea. That makes no sense. Like I'm pretty sure you could untie this and just get it over your head without a zipper. Don't y'all think? Um, this version, maybe not so much, but you'd still only need a zipper that comes, you know, halfway down your back. Maybe they were like running out of short zippers. I don't know. And if this completely unties to where this opens up, then same thing. You don't need that zipper. Let's see what it calls for. Oh, Lord have mercy. A 22 inch invisible zipper. No, you don't need that. You need like a nine inch zipper. That's annoying. Uh, crepe, Georgette, satin, crepe de chine, chalet. Yeah, lightweight, drapey fabrics for sure. You could make it out of a more stable or a more a heavier weight woven. It's just going to be more boxy. Like it's going to stand away from your body a lot more. So 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24, you need, yeah, a little more than, right at 2, a little bit more than um, for, you know, either version. Nothing new there. Okay, this is a cute little fun design. 
It's described as Mrs. Pullover Top has asymmetrical gathers and hem and sleeve variations. Who remembers that, gosh, was it McCall's? And it was, uh, the cover was gray, like a gray cotton. And I want to say it was sleeveless. And it had this little, same little released pleat deal. And everyone like freaked out over it that season. This is, I guess, the knit version of that. So it's a knit top set in sleeve and then you've got this you know pleat released pleat double re what are those called when the pleats open up on both sides you got a couple of those creating a little bit of waist shape but also creates like a cute little peplum you know it creates this little pull away from your body down here oh and then there's also this version that comes to a point which I don't love the location of the point, if I'm being honest, um, but I do love this little sleeve. That's cute, a little flounce. Yeah, what's the back? Give me the back. They do, I think maybe that's why I love Butterick so much is because they give me so many pictures. So is that a center back seam or? I guess it is. I'm not entirely sure why you'd need a center back seam in a knit top. Also, are there shoulder pads? Like, what is, what is this? That can't be her bra. Yeah, center back seam. Okay. Let's see, 35% stretch, jersey interlock, cotton knits, rayon knits, and then just some seam binding. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why that looks so full in there, unless they added something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Extra small to 2X, all in one. That's nice. One and three quarters to two yards of fabric, depending on your size. No notions. That's good. Oh no, it's not all in one size. Extra small to medium and then large to 2X. All right. All right, now we've got this one. Yeah, another Catherine Tilton. I was pretty sure, but just wanted to make sure. Okay, so we've got a collar stand with a, well, it's like a collar band with a stand-up collar that has these little folded over notch thingies, <laughs> a button band, and then, I mean, like, regular sleeves with a cuff and, like, a, a, uh, sleeve pleat in the whole nine yards but then the real showstopper here is this back piece oh and we've got some seaming here with a dart Oops. this collar though i don't know about that Sometimes the Catherine Tilton stuff is like really great, except for one little detail that is just like a little bit too much. But look how cute that little sleeveless top is. Okay, so here's the back. We've got a yoke. The collar is like popped. And then it looks like one pleat. And the rest of it is kind of like a circle skirt would be. Just very voluminous. Obviously, this stripe, this kind of psychedelic stripe that they chose is highlighting that really well. It's kind of like a cape and a shirt together. Oh, this one does not have a pleat. So it's basically like, a, like the same application of a circle skirt to a waistband and how that creates all the folds. Interesting. I don't know... How practical that is I mean certainly I could sew it without the all the collar accoutrement 
but I guess the back is cute. It is shaped really beautifully. It looks really flattering on both of the ladies. Cotton blends, broadcloth, linen, chambray. And then you need a few buttons depending on which view. Uh, 8 to 16 and then 16 to 24 on the sizing. And then, yeah, you need quite a bit of fabric. Two and an eighth to a little less than two and a half yards depending on your size. I think I really want to like this version, especially the sleeveless yellow one, but something about it. Hmm. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. All right, next up we have this little, is this a jacket? Jacket, coat, and belt. Well, those, that, those details are nice. Mrs. Line jacket and coat have princess seams, high neck, and front placket. Wow, look at that neckline. So interesting. And then you've got the princess seams. It's like a covered button band. You've got the epaulets, epaulets, and then little um, wrist bands, I guess. These little things, I don't know where to buy those, but those are cool. Here's the short version. They've got, you know, the shoulder pads in there. Princess, same, same thing, just short. Oh, and this uh, button band is uncovered and um, it doesn't have the sleeve or the shoulder detail. I mean, yeah, it's quite a jacket. I just, I don't know if I'm in the zone to make a jacket this year. You know what I mean? I also think what I've learned from making the couple of jackets that I have made is that I don't love making coats. Jackets are okay. Coats, I don't know about coats. But here are our line drawings. There are some little pockets in here too. I, I really do think that the design of it is really interesting. And if I were going to make a coat, this would be a strong contender for sure. It looks very expensive and very luxe. I will give them that. All right, yardage. Wool blends, tweed, gabardine, faux leather, faux suede. And then I guess it's fully lined. Yeah, fully lined. 8 to 16 and then 16 to 24, one inch buttons. And then just a little bit above uh, two and a half yards for the shorter version. And then three and a half yards, a little more than three and a half yards for the longer version with the belt and the shoulder thing and the wrist thing. So, and it's fully interfaced as well. So yeah, that's going to be an expensive jacket. But it also looks really good too. They did not put in the notions anything about these little guys here which is a little bit like cheating but whatever <laughs> all right I think we are on to our penultimate yep um, it's this cute little wardrobe and I love the wardrobes because you can buy one pattern and you get a gajillion garments inside of it. So this one we have a jacket, dress, top, sash, skirt, and pants. That's five garments. Five garments, one pattern. So even at this higher price point it ends up being cheaper than any any other pattern. Okay, so this one looks like we've got the top is pretty basic. Sometimes the tops are a throwaway. I will I will say that. But this one is bias bound at the neckline. Then we've got this little cropped jacket with a very slim sleeve. Very slim sleeve. Um, also bias bound, curved edges, and bias bound little wrist uh, hem as well. And then you've got your pants, which I can't tell if they're just pull-on pants or what. Here's the dress. 
So the dress has fisheye darts. I, I think this is contrast leather, which I think is really kind of cool. The leather and the plaid mixed together. Kind of an edgy, you know, Michelle Obama vibe. Um, but it's sleeveless. You've also got bust darts here. The neckline is bound. Here's the jacket and the dress together. There's your skirt, also in leather. Here's the jacket. Did the other jackets have this little flap, pocket flap? Yeah, that one does. And that one does as well. Yeah, I just missed it the first time. Um, so yeah, it has a little pocket with a flap that's also bound. Okay, here's the top. I mean, again, they kind of cheated a little bit. They make it look like these are like sewn down pleats. They're not. They just folded them that way. This is what the top really looks like. So don't get confused by that. They just, you know, bunched it up in a prettier type of way. But I mean, you could go to like a work conference if we ever go to those again and only bring these garments and have something different and unique to wear every single day. Especially if you did not make it in such a memorable fabric. I mean, granted, the plaid is gorgeous, but if you made it in something simpler, like a solid, uh, maybe make the top like an accent or color or something like that. Um, no one would ever know that you're, you know, wearing the same things over and over again. But it's also got back fisheye darts. This is a really cute little dress. Really cute. I love the flounce on the bottom, obviously. I love all things flounce. I mean, the jacket could be a little bit shorter to make it a little bit more, um, you know, just appealing. That Make the proportions a little bit more appropriate. This ending right here at her, you know, low hip is not very nice. <laughs> There's the top. Yeah, top's really basic. Is that, again, another 22-inch zipper and a top? I don't get it. What am I missing? Anyways, here are all your outfit options. So fun, cute. The jacket and dress together are just so adorable. I never did see the top of the pants. Okay, so they are pull-on pants. Which, let's be real, I mean, if you're gonna wear a waistband, you want it to be one like this, elastic, right? So here's the top. Again, they have it with the sash, um, but you can see that there's no pleats or anything. They just tie that around to give you a little bit more definition. You could certainly make the sash out of the leather and then wear it around the dress too. That would be kind of fun. There's a lot of really great pieces in here. A lot of really great basic pieces too. If you're looking to build up your wardrobe, you've got a great little pencil skirt, a great little pair of pants, little basic tank top, and a little basic crop jacket. All of these things I think you could make over and over again. I love the lifestyle patterns. Okay, yardage. This might be kind of hard for me to review, but uh, wool blends, crepe, gabardine, faux leather, brocade, and cotton blends. Again, I do wish that they did it like they do the notions where they separate the, um, the letters. Like, wool blend is great for the jacket and pants, but you wouldn't want that for the top. And so somebody who may not be familiar with big four sewing patterns might not realize that. You know what I mean? Um, like the faux leather is great for the skirt, but, you know, do you want that for the whole dress? I mean, you could, but I don't know. I just wish that they separated it out a little bit. But here are your notions. Looks like you need a zipper of some kind, a 24-inch zipper, a 7-inch zipper, half-inch bias tape, maybe purchased in place of contrast. All right, 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24 on your sizing. The jacket is about one and a half yards. Um, there's your contrast binding, fully lined. The dress is right at one and a half yards. 
Then they separate your binding and your flounce there. That's all really helpful. Top and sash, one yard, one and a half yards. And then the skirt, about a yard. The pants, about two yards. And then the contrast yoke. I wish they would have shown that. That contrast yoke, I wish we could have seen that a little bit better. But, because I would be interested in trying these pants, to be honest. I wish they showed them better, but we did get a lot of pictures, so I guess I can't, I can't complain too much. They did give us a lot, a lot of pictures. Okay, now we've got another uh, wardrobe pattern, jacket, dress, top, skirt, and pants. Again, that's five garments. This one is a little bit more conservative, maybe a little bit more mature. You've got your little um, jacket, kind of robe style jacket with the contrast band, contrast sleeve. You've got a pant and a top. Again, kind of hard to see what's going on. Here's your skirt. That might be the same top. I'm gonna say yes, because the little button detail here. So that is, the buttons I think are just sewn on, or is that a seam? Hard to tell, but you've got a jewel neckline, sleeveless. Ooh la la. Okay, you've got a little contrast um, satin up here. There is a seam here. And fisheye darts and a bust dart. There's the dress with the jacket, pants and top, just the dress. There's the back of the jacket. Oh, the top has the fisheye darts as well. Again, the length of the top, oh, I don't know about that. The skirt also seems really pretty. Um, but I want to know what's happening at the waist. Oh, pretty little kick pleat. I do wish the dresses were a little bit different from each other. The one we just looked at and this one, it's pretty much the same design. Um, so I wish they would have given us a little bit of variety there. Even if the other things are different. So the skirt and the pants, neither one of them have a waistband, but they do have a facing with side zips. The pants have darts in the front and back. The skirt does not. All right. Wool blends, brocade, crepe, gabardine. And then on this one, they do what I think they should have done for the last one. And that is say, Shally and double Georgette for, um, Garment C and D, which is the top and skirt. So, um, okay, here's your notions, invisible zipper, bias tape. I think that's for the sleeve and neckline maybe. Uh, also for C, three one inch buttons, that's the top. And one invisible zipper for the uh, pants or skirt. Jacket needs a couple yards of fabric. It's not lined. There is a contrast, the bands and all of that. Uh, dress B is one and a half yards, a little more than a yard for the top. Contrast, that little shoulder contrast detail, I guess takes this amount. Oh, and some interfacing skirt has the waistband is interfaced the like facing and then same for the pants so there you have it that is butterick fall 2020 if i'm being 100 percent honest i will say i'm a little underwhelmed um, but I do think that this is indicative of the times we are in. I think it's indicative of what New York City went through earlier this year. I think the fact that they even got collections out at all um, was probably a minor miracle that we may never know about. Um, but there are some fun little options in here if you're just looking for something new to add to your 
um, pattern stash. This little number is adorable. I also really like this little top. That might be it. <laughs> there are some redeeming qualities about each of them. I have a very large pattern stash though, so it takes a lot for me to like add stuff to it. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this all stuff that you would be making in the next couple of months? Let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, that is going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.